All right, and welcome everyone to the third session of the All Eldari Party. Uh, just a few announcements. Uh, one you probably already know if you've been following Wrath and Glory. Uh, apparently Ulysses has given up the English license and it's now with Cubicle 7. Um, the plan is to use whatever is the most up-to-date rules, but Cubicle 7 hasn't put out anything new yet, so we'll just keep on using what Ulysses put out. And of course I'll edit the intro and all that jazz uh, when I actually have an edited PDF in front of me. Um, the other announcement I have is that today we're going to be trying out uh, sort of a captain's log type thing. Uh, that I have stolen from my Star Trek Adventures games. Uh, I find that this usually helps players remember what happened. Uh, it also gives them a chance to spin things as their own character. Um, so we're just going to try it and uh, see what happens. Uh, so I believe, uh, Seneca, you have some sort of a log, yes? Yes, indeed. All right, take it away. So, warp transit, or webway transit, rather. We're waiting for our next assignment, and Prince Avon decides to begin our adventure by challenging the Quartermaster to a duel. Whether by fate, luck, or possibly even skill, he managed to overcome and win the duel in a not unwholesome manner, earning our party some new gear. It was after that that we discovered that Kalara, howling banshee Exarch, was slain by the foul Mon K, and the most qualified party available was sent to recover it. We arrived before them somehow. Guardsmen like their explosives, as we discovered firsthand, and after a few squads, we were able to break into their compound very quickly, efficiently, relatively quietly, all things considered, and recover the army first. Then, the Felark Gullen ambushed us in an attempt to recover the armor for himself. Through Psychic Mike, quick ingenuity with the Banshee Mask, and a few turns of... Let, let's be, let's call it what it is, luck, our group managed to slay the Felark. We returned to the ship to find that the Amoriel had lost her captain, and the ship was ripe for the commandeering. Not only that, her existing crewmaster was related to our own current captain. It's been a few days since the recovery of the armory on the planet of Forlone, and in that time we've managed to ingratiate ourselves with the Siren Elsar's crew aboard the Amoriel. This which has come over from Farsi Rari, and the Ilthira was rather smooth, and as far as Rari was concerned, as long as we were still serving Yinari in some way, it didn't matter, quote, what scantily clad harlot of a sister we flew around with. Now that we settled in, I will allow our DM to take things away. Alrighty. So, uh, you guys have all gotten your own rooms. I actually have them in roll 20. They will come up as needed. Uh, but uh, to start things off today, uh, you've actually been called to a meeting of all things uh, up near the bridge. So, uh, you guys are over here in the bottom right corner. So, uh, it is the four of you. Uh, it is Siren Elsaris. It is, and then accompanying her are three other Dark Eldar, two female and one male. Um... You would know that one of the female is obviously a Scourge, uh, but you do not know their names or their purpose as of yet. Um, as fate would have it, you guys are the last to arrive. And as you sort of sit down, the siren just sort of giggles and says, Oh, I see that uh, our bright and newest members of the crew finally made it. Tell me, how are you enjoying your stay so far? Warlock is never early or never late. Or that's exactly when he intends to. <laughs> uh, to answer your question, a lot better since I moved to a section away from the torture pits. Ah, but th those are the best rooms. Why would you want to give that up? Uh, have, you ever tried to, have you ever tried to meditate with the faint sound of screaming in the background? All the time. Yeah, I don't know what's to burn me dead. You, you, you can't see it because I'm wearing a mask, but I'm rolling my eyes right now. <laughs> our, uh, what's the problem with meditating with screams in the back? Our cultural differences seem to be showing just a little bit, but things have been quiet pleasantly in my chambers. I have no complaints. Hmm. Well, I'll take one positive thing about your accoutrements. In any case, I'd like you to meet some very important people on this ship. And she points at the male gentleman. Uh, again, he looks uh, pretty much like you would expect a, uh, a Dracon, or Dracon, however the hell you actually say it. Um, 
you know, a high-ranking Cabalite. Um, he has the typical uh, Cabalite armor. Uh, he has various blades and sharp carbines and splinter pistols, um, you know, kind of slung off him. You know, at a moment's notice, he could probably quick draw them. Uh, but for the moment, uh, he actually kind of looks like he's pouting. He's got his arms crossed, uh, his ponytail that's kind of high uh, up above his head. Uh, it's sort of limp, uh, almost as if the wind has literally been taken out of his sails. Uh, but the siren says, this fine gentleman, don't, don't pay him any mind. He's just mad because once again... He got shown up in the arena. Ah, uh, but to business. Uh, this is Dracon Garazon. Uh, Mr. Garazon, if you would please introduce yourself. And uh, Garazon, this time, unlike Glaive, you see the exaggerated eye roll. Like, he is totally not down with any of this, but for some reason he's going on with it. Uh, and in a gruffer voice, which again, I'm not going to try to replicate, um, he says, Well... I'm Garazon. I'm the one who actually owns the ship. Or rather, I'm the emissary from the Lords of the Iron Thorn. It's our ship. I don't give a shit who captains it. Just give me my slaves. I'll be happy. Um, Glaive will sort of lean over to Avon and go, Is ownership of Dark Eldar ships usually this complicated? Uh, I mean... Yes... I mean, a lot of the time, we don't have to worry about uh, killing the former captain quite so early. But, yeah, yeah. more or less. <laughs> Fair enough. And uh, the siren looks at the two of you and waits till you finish and says, Well, if you have any doubt, uh, you can call yourselves the captain. And sure, we'll drop you off where you want to go. But let's make one thing clear here. I wear the pants here. Well, not really, because which suit? But you know what I mean. I would. I mean, all say. four of us are wearing robes, so either way, <laughs> I'm, you probably have wear the closest thing to pants in the room, because uh, and sort of looks at the others. I, I don't know. Do, do they count as pants if they only come down to the waist? Eh, well, I, th I think you call that a leotard at that point. Uh, uh, and this is fair. I'm rather, I'm rather insulted. I'm wearing pants. I'm wearing I... pants as well. I would rather stay above Cormoran politics, and I'm going to say that the good Prince Avon will uh, speak for me for the time being. Oh, y y yes. The um, siren looks at, at, at Avon with uh, renewed interest, and her eyes almost glitter, and she says, Oh, you speak for him now. Tell me, what would he like to say? Well, that's a good question, but I'll have to hold all questions for now. That's that's what he's... That's what he's that's what he wants me to say. Ah, yeah. uh, boo, you're no fun. But, uh, again, sorry, we get sidetracked here to business. Uh, this lovely specimen, uh, sitting next to Glaive, is Hecatrix uh, Alze. And, like me, she is from the Cult of Strife. And uh, Alze is uh, what you would expect from a Cult of Strife witch. Um, standard witch suit, uh, razor flail, witch knives... Uh, a splinter pistol, uh, but what you really notice is that what sets her apart from you know some of the other witches you've seen during your time here on the Amoriel is that um, she has her hair down, not up in a ponytail like most witches do, because they they normally put like shard nets in them. Um, hers is just down; uh, it is about shoulder length, and what really again sets her apart is she has this white streak. Um, that sort of branches out almost like a letter M across her hair. Um, and Alze just kind of looks around at all of you, shrugs, and says, Well, I mean, no, I actually don't have anything. I, I, I've got nothing, Siren. And the Siren laughs and says, She's a woman of few words. Uh, but uh, I believe that brings us to our lovely Scourge. And uh, the Scourge, uh, as you may or may not know, uh, Scourge are a special type of Dark Eldar that uh, have wings. They have literally been through the homunculi uh, torture chambers, quote-unquote, and been given wings. Uh, Scourge are pretty much a big deal, uh, even outside of the Dark City. 
Um, so the fact that you're seeing one here either speaks to the Siren's influence or maybe Garazan had a friend. You're really not sure. Not sure. Yeah. yeah, there's sort of, there's a, what you call it, uh, a lot of drastic muscle regrowth and bone lightning that needs to happen. Mm -hmm. Suffice to say, it's not fun. Um, but the Scourge uh, actually bows her head very respectfully to the Siren and says, uh, my name is Eridesa, and I don't think this needs saying, but I'll say it anyway, but so long as you work for the Yanari, you will have no trouble from me. Oh, that's that's good to know. Um, but uh, anyway, what, what what are we all here doing with uh, all you suitably pointy fellows? So the siren again, almost like puts her uh, fists together in front of her, and almost like a steeple, and then puts her chin on it. You know, kind of like an eager kid. And she yeah. says, "Well, I thought you'd never ask. I huh. had an idea, and." Oh, you know how it is. We we need to get to know you. You need to get to know us. And oh, I thought right. the the best way to do that would be to offer you some time in the arena. Okay, cool. Um, well, uh, qu we do a question: Do we have to win anything in the arena? Because if so, we need to we need to bar Avon. Sorry, you cut out there at the end. Yeah. Uh, question: Do we need to actually win anything in the arena? Because if so, we need to bar Avon. Gotcha. Um, so she laughs and says, "Well, um, needless to say, this is more for sport and more for, shall we say, reputation or your standing on the vessel. Uh, if you are interested in acquiring an item, we can certainly talk about that." And uh, Garazon actually scoffs and says, All right, here she goes again, offering up my precious armory. Yeah, no, just go ahead, Siren. I don't mind. Oh, cool. Uh, can I have a clave, then? Is that... I'm going to look at Garazon. Garazon <laughs> like, just looks at you with a withering gaze and just says, Unless you want it shoved up your ass, no. I'm not really about that Dark Elder stuff, so I'll have to turn that down, but... Thank you. A very kind offer, nonetheless. So, uh, actually, it's Alze that speaks up next, and Alze says, I think the Sirens may be getting a little too enamored by Mr. Avon. Let me try and explain. There's a few ways we can go about this. One of the options is, you know, you fight those of us in the Cult of Strife and the Lords of the Iron Thorn. Of course, we won't be fighting to the mortal death or anything. I know how much you regular Eldar fear that sort of thing. But uh, it will definitely be a decisive battle nonetheless. The other option is a treat. Yeah, actually, something that I worked on and have been eager to show off for a while. We've acquired some orc prisoners as of late and as you well know orcs are very interesting to fight against they make for a good showing so if you would prefer to fight orcs instead of the likes of us she motions around at everyone then we'll do it a uh, i believe the the expression is a time trial whoever can kill the orcs the fastest wins i would rather stand against the greenskins than my kin Hmm. That's my vote. It's tempting. No, I don't tempting. think we should discount that just yet. I think uh, I think it's something said for a little uh, kin bonding, as it were. Yesenian gets gets up and says, "Well, let's just get on with it. Doesn't matter to me. Let's uh, let us show you why we're calling the shots here." <laughs> oh, the siren actually begins clapping and goes, well done. I like it when you speak for yourself. Avon, why, why didn't you announce him? Well, the, the, the pirate king, Asenrian, is, is, is anything but uh, humble. He prefers to, prefers to shout his own name over the death of his enemies. So. Mm. If you don't mind a critique, you seem like a very shitty crier. Well, you, you know, it's not, it's not actually my, my job. <laughs> Sorry. I think there might have been a mis miscommunication. I'm, I'm the correction is that it's no longer his job. 
Oh, who is it now? Nobody. He was just shitty at it. Ah, uh, I like his gumption. See, this is why I like a Senrian, and why I find Avon fun to tease. That's, that's very careful, but it's fine. So, what will it be, gentlemen? Will it be uh, against the good witches and the Cabalites of the Amoriel? Or will it be against some orc prisoners? Hmm. Uh, let, let's see what the crew of the Amoriel have. Hmm. Yeah, I think I think we'd uh, like to test our strength against you fellas. <laughs> well, you'd have to work your way up to me, but I think that could be arranged, but... Uh, you know, I, I've never been good at math, but I believe that is one vote orc and two votes for the Amorio crew. Seneca, what say you? You know, when when in Comora, do as the Comorans do. Yeah, I think that's a saying that we say all the time. Well, we certainly don't say Rome. No, we don't. What's this that? This is Rome you speak of. Uh, I think it's oh. like a village on Holy Terra somewhere. Oh, I think you mean Rome. It would do no good for me to vote Greenskins and cause a tie, so <clears throat> I will. Uh, I mean, losing to Greenskins would be extremely embarrassing. Losing to Dark Eldar, not so much. That's what I was thinking. You, you shouldn't be. You support. shouldn't be talking about losing. Okay, well, you know. Have you seen yes. these pointy fellas? I vote. <laughs> I, I vote for riots. Hmm. Very well. Then the next question I have is what quote-unquote difficulty would you like? I could start you off with uh, wet behind the ears witches and work your way up from there. Or I could pitch you against the good Hecatrex here and see how you do against her squad. Why don't we show the dragon here why we're in charge? Ho oh, ho, Garazon, are you going to take that? And Garazon again just rolls his eyes like he's this has happened before. And he says, you know how this goes, Siren. I kick their asses, we laugh at them, then we kill them, and we snort their soul stones like Coke. Well, whatever the other equivalent of Coke would be. Uh, joke's on you. I don't have a soul stone. Oh. <laughs> Everyone oh, just no. looks at you, Avon. Like, just silence. Everyone just looks at you. <laughs> what? I hopped it. Glade, Glade Stop. included. Stop. <laughs> I hocked it for cool stuff, look. And I take out the webway key and start like just clicking it randomly, trying to open stuff. I've been holding his soul stone for him. I figured it might be best most prudent. Yeah. So I, he, my... he he would not still be here if he'd sold off his inhabitants of the stone. No, no, no. Uh Avon, I would like cause uh isn't a uh the the webway key a tech test? It is, yeah. I'd like you to roll that for me. Okay. Let's see. No comp. No comp. Big money. Wow. Uh, that's, can I... Uh... Mm, that's just one short, which is kind of boring. I kind of wish it failed super hard or succeeded at all, but whatever. All right. All right. Okay, so, qu quick so... question. I've forgotten which of these spirit stones is mine. Was it Casus? Um, let's see. I believe Casus oh, is Casus is mine. No, Casus is mine. The only Good one is... Probably Logan then. The only one of the picture is mine. Solitaire is mine. I'll, I'll, I'll go back and check the vod of the first episode later. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um. But yeah. Uh. What, what were we saying? Oh yes. Uh. So Avon, uh, you're waving around the webway key, and uh, as luck would have it, you find an opening, and as the webway opens just a tiny bit, a torrent of blood just coats you from head to toe. Uh, uh -huh. It doesn't get anyone else, just you. But you're now covered uh -huh. in blood. I, I I realize now that trying to cast this on myself right here is probably a bad idea, but, you know. And the siren actually throws her head back in just pure joy and says, Oh, this is delightful. Does, did, does anyone have any feathers? Anyone, please. We need to tar and feather this man. Oh, please. Please don't. <laughs> At least I'm wearing my red pants. ha, 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 ha. I don't get oh. your reference. Oh, it's fine. I'm obviously far too cultured. Well, if we're going to be uh Yeah, I, I feel like that reference doesn't work with Eldar. <laughs> I'm wearing pants, you asshole. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I was more talking about the fact that yeah, yeah, no, what, never mind. <laughs> if we're to be uh, ground up and snorted as it was, we might as well get our affairs underway, shall we? Very well. Uh, we will have everything prepared for you. Uh, you need only come to the arena on deck three in approximately one hour's time, and I will leave you to deliberate and discuss strategy wherever you wish. With that, gentlemen and ladies, this meeting is adjourned. And without any ceremony, without saying another word, the siren gets up and departs. Uh, the scourge uh, walks off, uh, again, very quietly. Uh, Alizé uh, does kind of look at you all for a little bit with an uh, inquiring eye, uh, but then she too departs. And then the last one to leave before you guys are all alone uh, is Garazon, and Garazon just kind of looks you up, all up and down, looks at Avon, Stare, continues to stare at Avon. Then he just laughs Sorry. and walks away. <laughs> when he's gone, attempt to the hours. So, we just killed him, and that way the ship is officially ours. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. We just killed the shit out of these nerds. I just have to kill the rightful owner, air quotes. I don't see what could possibly go wrong with that plan. No, I think it's going to be fine. I, I can think of at least 12. Yeah. Look, I'm feeling confident. Yeah. <laughs> oh, blood. Well, let, let's let's try testing it out and, and seeing if we can beat him in a non-lethal context first. Mm. I only do lethal. Yeah, as, he's seen a, a saw, non-lethal molten beam. I don't <laughs> think that's a thing. Well, <sighs> I mean, you can stab people lightly. Dice cards until mm. then. Mm. Dice, dice cards until then. Yes, nice. let's uh, let's go play some dice cards. Nice. Out of curiosity, because I want to show off one of the rooms, which one of your rooms are you going to play dice cards in? Uh, well, first I'd like I to sort like of like just go around and try and find someone. Um, but I don't know. Well, Glee, Glee would offer because he likes being at that end of the ship. That's right. Uh, yeah. Are we are we actually on the um, on the bridge here? Is that yeah? The, so uh, that the bridge is uh, towards the middle upper of the map. So you guys are kind of off in a meeting room off to the side. I'm gonna take the siren seat and just you know warm my butt on it. Okay, power move. I like it. <laughs> actually, uh, actually, yeah. I have an idea. Mm -hmm. Quickly, let's put blood all over our seat. It'll be funny. I want to go over there. Uh, you know what? You, 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 you can, you can do know. that. I will sit and watch, so I will stand and watch, so that I can honestly claim to have not been involved. I've won my butt. I'm going away. Okay, yeah. So I get a seven this time, so I can actually control, I guess, where the portal goes. Yep. And you get a, you uh, get a glory. You do gain a glory. Yeah. Oh, right. You also guys get uh, two glory for that recap. Thank you for reminding me. Yep. Uh, do we get it? Do we get a BP? Uh, no. maybe at the end. <laughs> we'll see how this fight goes. Yeah. Um, what's the, uh, what's the role for the campaign cards again? Oh, right! We gotta do the campaign cards. I gotta remember to do these things. Alright, let me uh, pull I think it was up. 55? 54? Yes. I think it was, uh, it, it's 50, 54. 55. Okay. Alright. Alright, so let's start with that 13. Hey, that's, uh, that's decent. Nice. Oh, uh, uh, uh. ascending order. Okay, there's <laughs> a... Oh, 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 of course, Avon gets 69. Wow, he's rolling D-hundreds. Yeah, well, you know, it's quick. <laughs> uh, right. Let's see, so one. that is for Seneca. Uh, 21 for a Senrian. Ah, yes, Red praise the machine one. spirit. A classic card. <laughs> I'm I'll sure, that. I'm sure that that'll work. For some reason or another. Yeah, I got uh, that last time. Let's see. Bishop 48. What is 48? Ah, yes. This this is a good card for Bishop. This is an excellent card Ooh. for Bishop. And I will say that if you play this card, you will have to do the appropriate voice for it. No. And Ooh, then, so uh, <laughs> what, am, what am I doing for Avon here? Because those are all... Uh, 22. 22? <laughs> okay. 
Alright, so 20. I mean, if there is a 69th card, I'd prefer okay, that. So, so I want to state now that if I end up using this card, I want the complication to have been resolved by a orc somehow getting out of prison and into the arena. Noted. I like that plan. I like that. Battle Brothers. Mm -hmm. uh, I see. About teamwork, Brief unity, statement or about teamwork <laughs> unity or brotherhood. I don't think that's... That's, that's, that's a really good card. Out. Like, reading that, that's a really good card. It yeah. is. And you get a glory on top of that, that's pure. Yeah. That's that's on. But yeah, all right. um, Carry, I'm Carry. spraying blood all over the, the, the cabin. The, the... <sighs> I mean, they are a dark Eldar. They probably are okay with that. Okay. Uh, just as it's the I principle do. of the odds are this is not the worst flu that they've ever seen on uh on their deck. Probably not. No. All right. Probably not. So uh, again, just because I want to show off the room, uh, let's say you guys do stop over in Glaive's room, uh, and I did want to point out a few areas because I myself was curious as to what each of the areas was. I have an idea, but. Um, so obviously Glaive's room, like his actual bed, is up here in the left. Um, I'm not really sure what the purpose of this throne here is over to the right. Did you did you have an idea for that, Glaive? Or Avon, since I guess you were the one who made them. Um, uh, I don't know. Just whatever. That's his regal I'm dice cards say, table. You know, I'll, I'll need to decide what it was originally for, but I'm going to say he basically just uses that as his meditation spot. Okay. And then uh, this big swirling pool here down at the bottom. Because it looks like it has a floor panel out into space. Yep. And there's also a floor panel into something down here to down here at the south, and I'm just curious what that would be. I don't know. Dance floor. Whatever. Dance floor? All right. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Apparently, uh, Glaive gets down with his bad self. All right. So, uh, I'm not going to put your tokens here because we're going to jump as soon as I get the tokens ready. Um, but basically, uh, you guys play dice cards, uh, you don't manage to get, you know, any of the other, uh, Amoriel crew in on it, but give it time, uh -huh. I'm sure they'll come around. Uh, but yeah, uh, after about 50 minutes, do you guys start heading to the arena, or are you fashionably late? Uh, no, we run away. Me. Leave the ship, <laughs> never come back. Let <laughs> all. Oh. Glaive will sort of finish up the hand, grab his spear, and grab his spear, and uh, yeah, just the spear, and head down. Yeah. Okay. I'll, uh, I already have my weapons on me. I'll just follow. Gotcha. Give me a couple more seconds because I actually have to name uh -huh. all these catalytes because apparently I did not, you know, in prep. So shame on me. All right. And that should be enough that I can introduce as I talk. All right. So um, if you haven't been to deck three before, uh, the way it's set up is it's obviously not like a full-sized witch arena uh, that you might find in the Dark City, but it's definitely an impressive arena nonetheless. Uh, it has these two water features. That's uh, what you're seeing uh, kind of in the middle. Uh, they are cascading waterfalls that recycle themselves. Um, you could potentially jump across the gap, but really the only way to get across them is this land bridge in the middle. And already waiting for you when you arrive is the good old Dracon, as well as three of his Cabalites. And uh, kind of up here in the stands, uh, you see that a you know a moderate number of witches and Cabalites have shown up. Uh, your keen ears would pick up the sounds of people betting mostly against you and uh sort of center stage uh up in the stands is uh the siren herself uh sitting like a uh well since we use the rome reference like a uh, roman emperor might and uh you know once everybody has gathered gotten uh where they want to be so move if you want to be somewhere on your side of the arena move yourselves now All right. um also remember <laughs> to uh, draw your glory cards. A glory card. All right. Yep. Mm -hmm. I believe you guys uh, are. Start off ready. with one or two. Uh, well, uh, I believe the total is three because you got. Yeah. 
and I gave you two for the recap. Critical success at ruining someone's bridge. Mm -hmm. Two for the recap. All right, so we have three glory to go. Oh, never mind. As long as you guys know you have three, that's what matters. Yeah. All right. So, uh, if you all are satisfied, uh, once everybody is where they choose to be, uh, oh, I dropped a catalyte. One second. There's a Uh catalyte. Uh, before oh, before okay. it starts, can I can I look at the uh, at the uh, people watching and betting and be like, how much to bet on us? And I I pull out whatever passes for wealth for elders. Well, uh, one of the nearest witches to you kind of shouts down almost like a jeer and says, "Well, unless you want to pony up one of them soul stones you have, uh, you there's no way you're gonna win." How about well, Eldar Keystone? Webway Keystone. I smack him on the head. <laughs> Ow. Ow. I, I do feel kind of bad about how we're all just dunking on Avon, but he's very dunkable. Oh. Look. Guys, we're going to have to... After this, we're going to have to talk, have a talk about teamwork. This isn't great for our image. <laughs> I, I'm going to throw uh, a small pouch full of crystals like the equivalent of one wealth mm-hmm. to the witch. I mean, like, I'm betting on us. Well, I'm sure you'll lose it all the same, but the odds are currently 1 to 300 in your favor. Or not in your favor, against you. Oh, okay. Interesting. Uh, I would like to bet three wealth on us. Do you have three wealth? I do. Well, you can spend three wealth then. Even no, we've been over this. Well... Yes, you're right. We have, as I'm throwing the, the wealth at the guy. Uh, quick question, since we've been working together for a bit, uh, is there any kind of, um, since you know, three of us are wearing full-on armors and, with helmets and all, is there any kind of uh, internal communication system we have? I mean, it would make sense for you guys to have whatever the Eldar equivalent of a microbead is. Um you know, it, it seems like it's an oversight. They never specifically mentioned it. But yeah, I'd say you <clears throat> probably uh, have some sort of internal communication. Uh, obviously, Avon is going to shout half the conversation. But yeah. 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 So as I'm dis- basically creating some kind of distraction, uh, throwing my wealth around and Avon is following the lead, I'm going to uh, whisper through our communication system to both Seneca and Glaive, uh, Let's fuck them up. Boost us up before they realize we're going to start. I'll get started on that. Cleric, right. start your engines as it was. Yeah. All right. Yeah, well, I mean, they are Eldar, so hopefully they aren't that worried about honor in the ring. This is true. No, let's send these uh, send these nerds screaming to the warp. Right. Um, oh, wait. Yeah, about that. In before a one. We all know it's coming. Yeah, I'm going to hit the party with uh, Empower. Oh, God, yeah. Stay away, you fucks. <laughs> oh, yep, wow. just double checking everyone. Wow. wow. So, nice. uh, that? I'm going to shift a couple of those. So, the party as a whole are going to gain plus two ED to their attack damage and melee. Nice. Uh, nice. Oh, so good. All right, I will do the same. Mm. Actually, I'll, I'll need to go and double check how the wording on protect jinx is, whether they just have to be within five meters when I start using the power, or they have to be in five meters to, like, it's a constant range and they have to be within five meters to take advantage of it. I'd assume the latter. Right, the latter seems time. more in line. In the meantime, uh, though. Question for those are the plus two ED to both damage and attack roll? Uh, just to damage. Okay, just damage. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, oh, yes, and I'm using the protect version. So, eight, which means I have enough to shift one of them. So, everyone gets plus two resilience while awesome. they're within five Ooh, meters of me. Nice. Very nice. I have 13 resilience. Oh, God. <laughs> Come at me, bros. I'm sitting at a nice big old 11 in melee. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be yeah, fine. Me too. I mean, I'm the backliner, so I'm not worried. Right. And it was right. it was plus two ED to all melee attacks, was it? Yep, so yes, I could put it in chat. Yeah, melee damage. So both of your spells are if we remain within five feet of you. 
Yeah. Yes. So let's uh, let's actually use the aura feature here. Yep. I, I was about to ask. Uh, let's see. So there's Seneca's aura, and then Glaive's aura. Let's make it a different color. Uh, let's make it uh, let's make it a light blue. Oh, my word! Actually, making use of all the features Roll Twenty has put in over the years. Mm -hmm. Wow. And quick question: uh, What weapons are they carrying on the other side? So yeah. Uh, you notice that uh, the Cabalites, like the rank and fire Cabalites, have what appear to be standard armament for a Cabalite, which means a splinter pistol, a splinter rifle, and three plasma grenades each. Uh, the <laughs> the Dracon or the Dracon, uh, he's got something a little bit more fancy. Uh, by that I mean he has a venom blade. And he also is wearing a ghost plate. So he's kitted out pretty damn well. Um, so, yeah. Uh, All right. Then I, I'm going to cast a spell as well before. We, as, as I'm turning around from the audience and turning towards them, mm -hmm. I am going to cast as I talk to them. Sh let's start, shall we? And I'm going to cast Phantom Grip. Uh, this. Okay. <laughs> oh, 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 oh! That's you asshole! So, you killed us! <laughs> I think this is like the fifth time you've done this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you monster. <laughs> well, you know what happens oh. now. Roll that peril. Demons. Please, demons. That that can be the only the thing. Yasmu of decay. Oh. oh. Toughness test, D and The stench Easy. of rotting meat and decaying flesh seems to rise from the ground within 25 meters of the So, cider. this is not going so, to bother yeah. the. Drew Come on, Matt. That's, no, that's everyone. Well. <laughs> that's everybody. Yeah, and that's the audience. The audience, too. So all creatures <laughs> within range must make a toughness test, DN3, including those protected by technological breathing apparatus, and those who fail suffer one shock. This is a psychic stench. By the way, are these a mob? By the way? No, they are not a mob. Ah, uh, because that would actually kill them. <laughs> I actually passed my toughness test. All right, uh, DN3 Go me. Wow. Oh, wow. Are you serious? Wow, I'm gonna, I'm gonna is the only one. one. Wow. It's only like, one. Can I shift I'm, I'm one of mine to, like, stabilize game. things to help somebody else out? Um, can I, can I no, spend a because I find this funny. Okay. And what <laughs> does Phantom Grip do? Doesn't hurt to ask. So, yeah, I, say, I, will, so. I want a shit ton, which means it's going to be funny. So give me a quick second. Uh, I basically, it's basically a Phantom Hand that has my strength and uh, that has the strength and agility equal to my willpower. So it has a five strength and five, five agility. And since I, I was supposed to roll a four max and I rolled a nine, I can increase the range to a shit ton and use it as an action. And what I'm going to do is that Cabalite number two is going to have one of his grenade get get the uh, pin pulled off. Oh dear! Uh, is uh, is there any save against that, or should I make one up? Uh, re -roll no, oh, that's no. double check. Oh, thank God. Well, I guess it, uh, they say it's on the case by case, so uh, up to you. Uh, I tell you what, let's be fair about this. I will roll their base agility. Uh, their DN, because they're not expecting this, uh, their DN will be a 4. Okay. Well, we're the main thing is it can't be used to make an actual attack against a creature. Mm. And I, was, I would say that pulling the pin on the grenade is not an actual attack. That's why I'd let them get the agility roll. Yeah. Um, and it can be used for stuff like tripping them up or distracting them. Exactly. Just can't punch them. So... Yeah, one of the things is pull the pin from a grenade, etc. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a lot of things happen right. at once here. So let's break it down. So you know, Seneca Glaive, they do their their jobs, and then when a Cenrian starts to try and add into that, the entire arena and all of the stands just begin cursing and just otherwise just coughing and gagging as this unimaginable stench uh, permeates through the air. And uh, even the siren is like holding her nose and like, why, why? Well, it seems that our new oh god, <laughs> our new hey, come on, don't shame us. You've all smelt worse. Our... Don't act like you're better than us. Oh lord. Okay, new covers have started. You know what? Somebody get me an air freshener. 
And uh, right about then is when... We're the... doing a great job of ingratiating ourselves to our new hosts. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so it's right about then that the pin gets pulled on Catalyte number two, and he does not react in time. Um... So correct me if I'm wrong, but a blast medium is what range? Uh, th uh, th there's not really a range. a range, it's a number of creatures. Number of creatures, okay. I think, so, I think medium is three creatures. Okay. That's that's why I chose Cabalite number two, because he's rather okay. close to four and Garazan. And they also have, all of them have to save uh, for the stench Right, so I have to roll their stenches. All right, so let's start yes, with the Cabalites. So I'm not so... I'm not sure number two will matter. Well, I'll roll from anyway. So here's he might one. Be okay. No, oh, he fails. Two, three, fails. and four. All right, so they all lose no. shock. Cabalite number two is getting a bit. Use of its knowledge of the deadliness of grenades to Eldar. Yeah, fuck you. I was like, they bring plasma grenades to a sword fight. All right. I was actually hoping to steal all those grenades because they're super valuable, but this is and... good too. That's only one of them. Of course, the Dracon does not give a single shit. Um, Alright, so up next, uh, I have to make sure that I do grenades properly this time. So, even if they're in the blast, they still get a save, yes? So, yes, when the just... grenade is thrown to you, not strapped to your body, and you don't see the shit coming. Right, well, so I'm going to say, Cabalite 2 is gone. Like, there's no doubt, like, Cabalite 2 is gone. But I'm wondering whether Cabalite 4 and the Dracon would get some uh, sort of test. So, so if I remember correctly, what I found last time is that they get to try and save if they go in full defense, which means they yeah. would lose something next turn, if I remember, uh, remember correctly. Yeah. Okay. Basically, it's like, fuck this, trying to jump behind cover. They're just like that. diving to the ground. Sort yeah. Of thing. yeah. But they might... um. The other thing is that it might not actually... If he's in Ghost Plate, there's a good chance that this won't do shit. Uh, well, uh, why don't... Uh, why don't we have a Senrian roll the plasma grenade damage? Uh, it is 10 plus 1 ED, uh, AP minus 1. So just roll your uh, your D6. Oh, wow. Boom. Nice. So that's 12 damage, uh, AP minus 1. Um, okay. Uh, I'm gonna say Cavalite 4 dies. There's no way he's getting out of this, so he's dead. Um, obviously Cavalite 2 is super dead. Wait, wasn't this meant to be non-lethal? The Dracon, however... I feel like there's a ruin action I can do. Oh yes, thank you, Pass Me. You actually put in a ruin. All right, so I can spend one ruin, and by doing so, I manage because he gets the same benefit uh, as certain other Eldar or Dark Eldar. Um, his, how do I say this? His speed is increased, and his dodging capability is also increased. Um, so, what is the test He's... he is rolling? Uh, oh boy! Defense, so initiative. So initiative. If... Okay. Yeah. All right, so give him bonus die here. Uh, what is the difficulty on this? Uh, three. Three? Ah, uh, yeah. Leaves and yeah. bounds. Oh, yeah. So I, don't know, I don't know if he still takes damage on that. Uh, well, you know, it doesn't hurt to look it up. Yeah. Uh, no, though, you don't take anything if you dodge a blast. Oh, okay. Unless okay. it's like a huge one, in which case you can't even attempt to dodge it. Right, like I know there's special yeah. rules with uh, flame weapons as well. Um, that even if you dodge, you take something. But anyway, so again, painting the picture. Uh, Cabalite 2 can't do anything. He literally looks down and goes, oh shit, and then he blows up. <laughs> uh, Cabalite 4 uh, also turns and says, you stupid son of a, and then he dies. <laughs> the Dracon apparently sees this coming and literally just sidesteps the bare minimum of the explosion and pulls out a pair of sunglasses from God knows where and just puts <laughs> them on and says, really? That's that's the best you can do? My turn. Oh, it's better than your guys. <laughs> and so, indeed, it will be his turn. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what he's going to do... 
uh, is he I think we is... Should seize. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I think we should seize the initiative. <laughs> well, up. you could, but I'm going to spend ruin. So, okay. Uh, <laughs> Fair enough. He, no, no, he, no. He's going to use the rules the way they're meant to be used. Yep. Yes. All right. So, this is rather apt, but uh, his range on his plasma grenades... It's enough to hit oh, you. No. I measured it twice. That's a 16. Mm -hmm. 15. Uh, you used full defense. I mean, you could, but... No, you know. no, no. no. Didn't... He, used it. he used it, so can he do something? He can because I spent ruin. Uh -huh. He's he did not use like full that. Yeah. He did not use full defense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he literally no, he just sidestepped defense. it. Yeah, but uh, the only way you can sidestep the grenade is by using full defense. Otherwise, you don't, you're not dodging. Ruin. Yeah, there there is ruin actions, okay. and I will fully admit that maybe this is a little bit broken on his part. But you know, that's kind of why we're doing this arena fight in the first place is to test, uh, you know, how good or how bad these ruin actions are. Because if they're yeah. terrible, I can't put them in the Dark Eldar compendium. Um, so fair. please, it, no, I, I definitely welcome the feedback. Like, if that feels broken, then you know. I, I don't know. I was I was just making sure. I I just I'm just reading now the full defense. So and for the grenade, what, you only needed. So it wasn't a it wasn't a DC three for the grenade at all. Mm -hmm. It was it needs his defense, uh, meaning uh, the initiative roll is is rolling is added to his defense for the round. That's the full defense, and if that surpasses the damage then he's considered to have uh, dodged, basically, the area of effect. So what he needs is that he needs his defense to be a 12 or more. And okay. so he rolled a 9, and uh, I'm assuming his defense is more than 3, so that's Yeah, be his defense yeah. is more than 4, yeah. yeah. So, okay. So, again, learning experience. I, of course, welcome the feedback because, you know, it's been a while since I've done this. So I would rather be corrected than people resent me for not doing it properly. Um, okay. So... Unfortunately, you guys don't have Ruin, so let's see if he even manages to get the grenade where it needs to go. <laughs> Alright, so he's going to roll. Uh, that's a ballistics test, I believe. Yeah, he only needs like a 3 on this. Yep, oh, yeah. so that's a 7. Um, I believe I... So if he was aiming for Avon, uh, I believe... Why? I believe uh, your defense is what a three, a four. Uh, well, so I think because it's a blast, he just needs a, a three to hit. But my just defense three? is okay. Um, yeah, like that's why blasts are good. But my defense is seven at the moment. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, and... actually, I've cover. So if this is half cover, eight, and if it's full cover, nine. Uh, it is half. Um, okay, so it's on me. Obviously, I need to go read blast a little bit more. My my notes on the subject are. Painfully small. Um, but in any case, uh, he does manage to get a grenade right smack dab into Avon's face. Oh, no. <laughs> so um, this is your chance to decide what you want to do with that. But uh, I'm going to roll his damage here. Yeah, I'm not going to bother full defensing, I think. Uh, that's going to be 11 damage minus 1 uh, uh, armor. Yes. And it will Nothing. hit Seneca, Asenrian, and Avon. So, oh, if we want to try and dodge it, we can do a full defense, which yeah. would roll initiative. And if our added successes to our defense uh, is 11 or more, we dodge. That is unlikely. But that would still reduce the damage no matter what, so... I'm gonna... I'm gonna right. do that. Oh, you sacrifice your turn. Yeah, or you sacrifice your head. I've already got my my power up, so okay, I'm content with that. And I blew two of them, so I'm good. So I see. I, 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 re I retroactively feel smart for spacing out. So. Oh, and there's a glow in there, and I'm gonna use wrath to reroll. Mm -hmm. We're gonna... Sorry. Oh yeah, I take zero damage. Nice, nice, nice. It gets me to eleven. Just nice. <laughs> All right, and I, get, so, and I get a glory as well. So for my sake, none of you took any damage from that, yes? Uh, Aiden did, right? No, no, I don't. I don't even have to move. It just bounces off me. What is a? Uh, 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 
full defense. Because my resilience is thirteen. Your resilience is thirteen. Yes. What the hell? Because it got boosted by me. Yeah, it's not. It's not the resilience. Is the uh, oh? You mean for the damage? No, it's your defense. Yeah, for damage. So it, it, it hits me, but does nothing. Oh, I actually don't need to roll. I have a resilience of eleven. No, so it's one, eleven minus wait. one. I we I'm wearing uh, rough mage armor, whatever it's called again. Rune armor. So, okay, yeah, thing it, it can't shock. be reduced. Oh, then actually we don't need. I don't need to roll that. So can I call it back? I'll give the glory back. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think that's all. I'd rather keep my wrath. I'll stick to my roll because I needed it to boost me up. Okay. So that again, then does does that anyone then, that take does any damage? Shocker. Don't believe so. No. If it equals, it's... yeah. I was gonna say. So if it does equal your uh, resilience, you do take a point of shock, but you don't actually. Take you damage. do take one shock if it equals. Yeah. Okay, then, and I I take a shock then. Okay. Because it's not a melee attack. Alright. So, uh, again, painting the picture. Dracon throws a grenade. It hits Avon in the face. Everybody in the crowd is dying still from the stench, but manages to laugh all the same uh, as the grenade explodes. And then the crowd laughter dies off as, you know, the smoke clears and the three of you minus Glaive. Oh, sorry, no, it's, it's not one shock, it's one D3 shock. D3, yeah. Well, the uh, the three of you minus Glaive are standing there perfectly fine. And the crowd is noticeably quieter from this event. And it is now your turn. Uh, sorry, is that all you have, by the way? Uh, uh, okay, if I try and be cute and do something psychic bullshit? Yeah, be of course, cute. Go for it. Okay, uh, I okay. will use Compel on Cabalite number three. Okay. <laughs> and I will. Yeah, so I'll sort of raise my hand at him and sort of mentally project at him. Jump into that waterfall. <laughs> nice. All right, so this will be uh, DN5. Okay. Yeah, nice. That works. Yep, and I got. Yeah. No, nah, can't shift anything, so he has to pass a difficulty four willpower test or obey the compel. Well, I don't think he's passing it, but let's see what happens. Uh, no, uh, nope. No. And he does this on his turn, yes? Yes. It compels with that with their next action, they do it. All right. Well, as the turn passes to cab light number three, he jumps into the waterfall and begins swimming around like a rubber ducky. Oh, God, I thought that was going to, like, send him in a portal loop. Oh, well. Well... You know, well, keep watching, because at the end of his turn, he gets sucked into the regurgitator and starts being flung over and over and over through the loop. Uh, so, regurgitator. <laughs> so let's just say that there's nothing really left of Cabalite number three. It's just sort of bloody chunks that are coming through the waterfall. Ah, dang it. I thought that would be non-lethal. Oh, well. Oh, non-lethal. <laughs> It's in the entrance to you that you said non-lethal. Non-lethal when it comes to yeah, the dark you know, And Compel specifically says no, giving them a lethal command doesn't negate it. But you didn't know it was lethal, nor did, yeah. um, nor did I mean, I just assumed play. that, oh no, it, it, it like it's a, like a portal thing. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, that that's all a thing, and all has happened. Welcome to forty k, everybody. We have fun here. <sighs> can I uh, can I take it? Yeah, I was gonna say it's uh, Avon, Seneca, or Asenrian. Uh, I'm gonna spend my return well, recovering from the full defense. Yeah, so go yeah. Last. I'll. Can I take it? Sure. sure. Yep. All right. Well, I blasted the uh, half of the Cabalite, so I'm gonna point. I'm gonna draw my swords, point them towards the uh, Dracon, and let's go boom again. Okay. That is a success. Oh wait, that's the wrong. That's the wrong spell. I wanted the <laughs> God of Flame. Uh, so that's a D and five. So I succeed, and I can shift uh, one thingy, which means that I get to make a plus one ED damage. So that's uh, four, fourteen plus three ED damage and burning. If if nothing, that's just what they're gonna take. Okay. Which uh, would be 16 damage. Both of them. It's a medium blast. Alright, let's see. So, 
Uh, he reduces that by that much, which would leave him with that much. Uh, he is going to attempt to soak. All right, and he's going to burn. If they take damage, they burn. Where's the soak button? You'd think this would be easy. Oh, I hit the Ah, here it is. I was like, where is it? Uh, okay. So he only takes off one of those. So he goes down to a grand total of... I can math today. You said it was 14, 15, 16? 16 total. Okay, so 16 minus that... Minus that. Okay, I don't have any The number you're looking for is zero. Now, unfortunately, <laughs> he is uh, heavily wounded, but he is... Oh, that's uh, close. Uh, and, he, and he's on fire. All right, what do I need to do for if he's on fire? Uh, I, I'm going to check that, and the cover light is also in the black. I think it's going to be like a dash or something. So it's D3 mortal wounds on his turn to begin with, and then... Um, he has to make a willpower test on his turn to basically act. Otherwise, he spends his turn screaming in pain. And then he can make an agility test after that to put the flame out. Or, you know, or he can... Yeah, burn, burning's a bitch. Yeah, it's bad. I like that in most games, burning is you just stop, drop, and roll. But in this, you have to realize that you got to stop, drop, and roll because fire yeah. is fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, uh... Cabalite number one needs to... No, he's dead. Cabalite number one is dead. He, he is dead. I'm going to move to the to here and look with my swords drawn to the Drake arm and say, you can admit defeat now. I like your gumption. Uh, but, unfortunately, you can't do the interaction attack that would go with that normally. Cause... Oh yeah, I'm just throwing that out there. Gotcha. He, okay. he, he's he's just uh, flexing. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I always enjoy a flavor like that. Uh, well, uh, all the enemies have gone, or have they? Oh, it's me. Oh, no. <laughs> so, Glaive, you're watching this yes. all go down. You're thinking to yourself, wow, this was hardly a fight at all. When all of a sudden, you hear something crack behind you, you turn around... There's a purple orc just chilling there. Ah, ah. Okay. Uh, uh, hello. And he says, Dracon thought you might pull shit like this. We crump. We smash. I can't do orcs. Oh, of course you do. So let me pull up the commando sheet here. Oh, oh, I've just realized why he's purple. Yeah. Because have you ever <laughs> seen a purple orc? Yeah. What's a purple orc? Mm -hmm. They're the stealth commandos. Yeah. Because yeah. you, you can't, you've never seen a purple yeah. orc. Yeah. Because they're so sneaky. Sneaky gates. Alright, so let's see what he rolls. Uh, there it goes. I oh, am so wow. mad in a good way. Wow. Wow. Just wow. Uh, I think that beats your defense, yes? I'm pretty sure... It, yeah, I've got a defense of two. Okay. Alright, so... Uh, this is going to... He's going to shift that. Uh, I believe Wa. I have that in my notes. It's only uh, if you're injured. If they're win... Oh, okay, so it doesn't apply well, maybe here, he is in a group. We don't know, because he's yeah. a commando. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there could be more. <laughs> right here. Probably name number three. Uh, well, so uh, that's going to be a total of 11 damage, I believe, after the shift. And I mean, damage, so which is exactly negated by my, my resilience, so I take 1d3 shot. Mm -hmm. I mean, to be fair, that could be the number of fingers he has. That could be his <laughs> number. <laughs> cool. The number of brain cells he has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's lots of things it could be. Um... When you can't see your enemies, that's ne that's when you need to go full Emperor, like I did in the first mission. Are you allowed to do interactions on the turn you restore from full defense, or is it just nothing doing? Nothing. I think it's nothing, yeah. Okay. Um, so, I mean, if you want to take your turn now, it would pass back to the enemies. Uh, 
but basically you would get rid of that full defense finally. Yeah. We still got Aven to work, but I've got an yeah. idea for the orcs, but I'm going to need to recover before I can. Yeah. So, um, you guys, I'm going to let Aven go ahead and go, and then I will go after that. All right, Aven, okay. what you got? What's, what's my campaign card again? Uh, it is the last one, the Battle Brothers. Oh, it's a it's another player's test. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, shame. That could come in use later. I may possibly borrow you for that, but yeah, yeah. See, so... I was what I was thinking is doing attack interaction and then just teleporting this nerd. <laughs> it's a horrible <laughs> like, idea, but into the webway. I have an idea. <laughs> It's a horrible idea. But I think I'm gonna just, yeah, just continue to do a tech interaction test and then use my last wrath through your roll if I need to. Okay. Uh, got... uh... Hmm. Question. Qu mm -hmm. So the tech interaction test is the range of my int, but. Can I, instead of doing a tech interaction, can I just try and use the portal? Like, use the, the portal itself? Well, what are you trying to get out of the portal? Like, what are you trying to accomplish with this? I'm trying to jump over to him so I can go and smack him in the face. Oh, I see. Um, yeah. I would say that it would take up your action to do that. Like, you wouldn't be able to do this and attack unless... I think you could spend glory... Is it glory that gives you the extra attack or the extra action? I forget. No, so you can multi-action. Ah. Um, so I could do that. I take suppose. penalties when you multi-action. Yeah, so it would just make us from a 5 to a 7. I mean, if you want to do it, go for it. Yeah, actually, I'll just do it. I won't multi, because I'll just run over to him and then full defense or something. Because I think okay. it'll be funny. Here we go. Oh, one short. Again. You can, uh, oh, mate. You can like use a glory to get an extra an extra die. Yeah, that's true. So you could either one extra die if you want to go that fifty fifty, or you can spend the wrath and reroll it. Yeah, I know. Uh, we, we've got full glory. Just try the glory. Yeah. You want to spend two glory? I'm just. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. But you can spend them one after the other. Can you? I think you have to spend them at the same time. I do? Okay, okay thank goodness. All right. Well, you succeeded either way, so yeah, there you go. So where do I teleport to? Uh, well, since you did succeed and I'm not seeing any ruin symbols, you end up right about here. Oh, sorry, I meant to get over to the big guy. Oh. I wouldn't have done that if I was just going to go to the orc, sorry. Uh, I guess <laughs> I that was the confusion on my part. You end up behind him in classic teleports behind you meme style. That's right? a personal kid. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, and yeah, I can't do any. I can't do anything else without that constitutes an action. But what I can try and do is use a simple action to try and pull his grenade pin <laughs> if he has one. <laughs> I would say that he's kind of on fire at the moment, so that would be definitely a difficult task. Okay, so in that case, I pull my grenade pins <laughs> oh, and just hold them in front of him. I, I just want to paint the picture because maybe maybe I'm the only one who realizes how absurd this is. I, I don't see how you get out of this without getting hit. Oh, you will. So you know he's on fire. He's gonna die, right? No, I know, but I think this is funny. So you <laughs> you teleport behind him. You yeah. pull out your own grenade. You pull the pin, hold it in his burning face, and start laughing. Yeah. Hey, how okay. you doing, Dracon? Just, just uh, have, have sure. life. I want to make sure we were all on the same page. Yeah, actually, you know what? Can I pull the pin and then drop the grenade at his feet with the other simple action? Mike, drop it. <laughs> Yeah. Just roll it between his feet. Yeah. Uh, sure. I, I think it's funnier if you hold on to it as it explodes, but sure. No, I know, but I am conscious. Well, actually, yeah, no, I will hold on to it. If that, if it's just 
just the damage. If it's just like I automatically take the damage and I can't full defense, then I would like to hold onto it. But if it's like mortal wounds, I'm a, a bit concerned that it would no, just turn it's around. No, it's not going to be mortal wounds for you or anything. Okay. Okay, yeah, then I'll Almost. just hold on to it and just put it in his face. You may need a new hand, though. Yeah. Yeah. That's and fine. builds character. All right. So that all happens. It passes back to the enemy's turn, which you'd think, well, there's no more enemies left, GM. What the fuck are you smoking? Hey, Seneca. Look who found you. Number 11. What the fuck? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, this is the problem. All right, so with the protect, protect affects defense, right? Yeah, it affects resilience. Oh, okay, resilience. Then I'm defense is not great. Hence why I took shock instead of wounds. Defense two. Well, uh, he did roll a combat, combat complication, so let's roll that before resolving any damage. I We're just going to re-roll another one. Oh, I mean, is it stuck in me or yeah, what? Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's see what the damage is first, and then we'll decide if it's stuck in you. That's fine. Uh, well, uh, that I is a 10. I am resilient to 11 because of that, and parry, so I'm good. Nice. So, it does get stuck in you, but it doesn't actually hurt or damage you in any way. It's like, it's wrapped in my robes. Armor. Yeah. And the commando's just like, Oi! What is nonsense? I'm uh, I'm gonna recover now. Okay, you recover. Since I'm the last member of our party. I would like to say into the party chat, I have a horrible idea. Can you guys let me take take the lead on this one? Oh yeah, go for it. I'm I'm curious to see how this goes. You you guys just let me blast the entire battlefield. Just just do whatever you fuck you have. Fair enough. All right, well, I will take the initiative on the turn then. All right, so uh. Thankfully, no more orc commandos pop up, but apparently one is three and one is eleven, so that might be cause for concern. I am going to step away from eleven. I mean, 11. optimistic scenario, orcs are just really bad at counting. Or they use yes. base four. I mean, he's got fingers and toes to count on, so... Right. Take what you can get. Yeah, I'm just going to step away from him. He can attack me if, I want, if he wants. Yeah, let's... He doesn't uh... have a weapon. Wow. Wow. That's a six. Wow. That'll hit me. Ooh, shit. It's another complication. <laughs> oh, wait. No, no, he's whipping his That's stuff. not with his chopper, though, yeah. So his chopper's now broken, I guess. Yeah, so both of his <laughs> weapons, both his slugger and his chopper, are both just broken. And he's like, oh. he, oh. you know, you've never seen a purple orc, much less an orc cry, but it's he gets pretty close. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to... In the in the Vox B, just say, don't think less of me for this one, guys. <laughs> and I will disengage my helmet, remove the helmet so I'm looking at the orcs in the eyes. Uh -huh. I will draw the choppa that I got from the Quartermaster last time and point to the Dracon, who's currently on fire. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to roll a... God, I'm not trained in these things, but I've got to work with what I've got. Persuasion... And what I am going to say is, <clears throat> Oi, you're going to let a wee little fiery fella like that come boss you around? Or are you going to fight someone with a proper chopper? And I'm going to try to take charge of the orcs. Did we ever decide what quality of chopper you have? It was a pretty good one. Okay. I'd like you what? to roll me... I definitely feel like persuade is the the proper skill here. Um, There's an intimidate. I intimidate. would say either persuade or intimidate. I'm gonna take intimidate because I have a five on intimidate versus a two on persuade. Oh, and you feel I will give you one bonus bad, bad. die. You'll give me what? One bonus die. Okay, so. Well, that's a ruin. Um, well, well, it's, well. But... Don't you have the card? Don't you have the card that uh, cancels the complication? Yes. No, that's me. That's ah. No, I've got the Resist Corruption card. Oh. Um, I'm going to actually spend both of my Wrath on this one, too. To add two dice, to, two extra dice for a total of three extra dice to the pool. So, that will be two extra successes for a total of seven successes with the complication. 
Okay. So, obviously the orcs are stunned by this performance. They, of course, see the logic in somebody who is good at crumping and has a masterful weapon that is apparently better than theirs. Uh, so... Who crumped the weapons of the other one, too. Mm-hmm. So, what happens is, is the two orcs, the commandos that you see so far, uh, say, Right, you the boss now. But at the same time, two orcs that you didn't see before, who I will number appropriately in a second, uh, reveal themselves and also do the same thing. So many orcs. <laughs> so many orcs. They pop in front of you, and he's like, finally, a proper challenge. I'm uh, going to take my... Wait, are these one these new found ones on my side, or are they just popping up to attack? Uh, they are on your side. Okay. Or at uh, least they I, are making movements to indicate as such. I will point my choppa at the Draken, and uh, I will give him the command of crump em, boys. All right. So I'm going to say you guys have the narrative option here, because I've looked up burning, and short of... Actually, I don't think there's anything I can do. He dies on this next turn. So I I would like for the orcs to take him limb from limb, and then what's left of his torso burn to death. So well, yeah, Anakin's he's wearing, him. He's wearing super expensive armor. Don't don't break it. Fair enough. Um, like remove it and then smash him. <laughs> I mean, if you can convince orcs to use that much finesse. Oh, I, 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 I've burned the, the bastard. I'll it. remove it. I've got it. Are you ready? Loot him, boys. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'll say if you spend a point of glory, this will happen. Uh, one other thing before that happens. There's a grenade that should explode. Oh, no. Yeah. I, I'm aware of it. Is there any okay. opposition to spending the glory for, for the orcs to loot this guy? Okay. I will just spend that for you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So here's what happens. Because this is a glorious clusterfuck and everything I wanted out of this encounter. Um, so, the Dracon is on fire. He knows he's going to die in a few moments. He has a crazy Eldar sitting next to him with a grenade in his face, laughing maniacally. Four orc commandos rushing towards him to loot him. He sees no dignity in any of his options and decides <laughs> that in this moment that he will do one thing and one thing only. He will begin crying for his mommy. And <laughs> as you all know, a Dark Elder doing that, not exactly a good thing as far as social standing is. So, long story short, Avon, I need you to roll me the damage on your grenade. Okay. Okay, so that's just, uh, I believe, 10 minus 1. Yep, flat 10. So, the grenade goes off. Uh, do you take any damage from that? I, I take shock, actually. D3 right. shock. So take the shock. So your grenade goes off. Uh, surprisingly, you are completely fine. Oh, Apparently, actually, because uh, actually resili you don't have the resilience from Protect Jinx anymore because you teleported over there. Yeah, I have 11 base. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, he is... So uh, if the grenade he... had been more potent, he would have been hurt, but... Yeah, if I it was a risk, but it was worth it. Mm-hmm. So, the explosion sends the Dracon reeling and staggering. Uh, it did somewhat put out the fire, but not enough to matter. And as he maybe stumbles around, maybe about to, I don't know, maybe about here, uh, it's at this moment that uh, the Orc Commandos storm across the bridge and just descend on him like a, uh, a flock of seagulls at uh, at the beach when somebody starts throwing bread around. And without going into gory detail, uh, when they step back with pieces of ghost plate armor, uh, you know, in their hands, there's not much left of the Dracon. Can I, can I walk over to whatever's left? And if there's still a head, I want to sever it. Okay. <laughs> and, then I'm, and then I'm going to raise it and say... Who bet it against us? <laughs> yeah, we'd like to collect our money now. So, so the and Glaive will sort of lean over to Seneca and go, so what happened to non-lethal combat? 
That went out the window when an unexpected green element was added into uh, into everything. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So, so the stands are like dead quiet, and I'm, I'm gonna throw the head uh, towards the uh, the high chair of the siren. Not to I'm gonna do not, not, to, not aiming at her, but aiming at her feet. Right, right, right. Uh, she I'm actually listening. catches it out of midair, uh, uh, looks at it, blinks a few times, and starts laughing and says, <laughs> Well, they just saved me a whole lot of time. I mean, I could have killed them myself, but, you know, if you have good help, let them do it for you. And she shows the head to the crowd and says, Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think we have our answer. Sure, they use psychic bullshittery, but I think they get the job done quite well. Don't you agree? And there's like one or two like, yeah, or one or two like slow claps. And she says, I'm sorry, did I not just see a glorious bout of embarrassment and emotional pain? Clap, you fools, clap. And like everybody starts clapping because they know if they piss off the siren, they're dead. And uh, you are essentially lauded as quote unquote victors. And uh, a... Shut wog. Get the orcs cheering too. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so a uh, you know as you start trying to negotiate with the orcs of what to do with the armor, um, a witch actually steps out. Uh, she's not that big. Uh, she <laughs> steps out um, and says, um, "I'm supposed to take you to the Drake Guns quarters." Cool. Apparently his shit's yours now? Yes. I mean, I guess that's how it works. That includes this shit. I'm going to take a second and look over the commandos and see which one's the biggest. Uh, that would be Orc Commando number 25. All right. Oh, and uh, Aven, you should grab the grenades. Whatever. Gonna, yeah, so I was about to say, I go around and steal as many grenades Roll me a uh, Roll me a D3. That's how many grenades you salvage. Yeah, because okay. there were a lot of explosions, so... Yeah. I'm going to... Ah. Present uh, number 25 with the fine choppa and trade gesturing to the uh, to the pieces of the armor. Okay. I will say that by trading your... Uh, actually, let's, let's actually do this as a roll. As much as I am inclined to just give it to you, I do want to at least try uh, using influence or persuasion or, or something here. That's fine. Okay. Uh, Can I uh, assist? Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to need an assist on this one. <laughs> you never know. He might fancy pointy El Eldar gubbins. <laughs> yeah. My, I'm not going to assist you because I would kill them all. So if I read this correctly, uh, you actually get a bonus because your trade is it has the orc keyword. Yes. Oh, yeah. hold on, Jet. Still here. Edge of my seat. <laughs> well, you know, uh, of course, it has to be one of those jets that lingers for a while. Um, of course. Anyway, so you have your trade has the orc keyword, which means you get an advantage here. Okay. Um, so that basically means that you get a plus one dice to this test. Okay. Um, I would say that. Ghostplate is very rare. A choppa is what? But do they know Ghostplate is rare? No. So that's going to play out that... in their favor. Yes. Um, but from a mechanics point, I still need to figure out what like the discrepancy is. Uh, yeah. Choppa is what? Scarce? Scarce even still a thing? No, I think no, sorry. Actually common. I believe it's common. Okay. <laughs> it's a good choppa, but it's a common weapon. Yeah. All right, yeah. I will say then that this will be a difficulty five. Oh, Oof. God, I don't... But, think but, 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 I did roll on the side here. Okay. If you also give Orc Commando 3 something, you may get the Venom Blade. Okay. Ooh. Um, I... Am going to provide a counter offer at this point mm -hmm. uh, by reminding them of their natural place. 
and that I am weird and warpy, and 25 is the biggest, therefore 25 is the boss. <laughs> and I'm going to tell 25 that if 3 wants to trade, he has to clear it with him, because otherwise <laughs> he's going to have to crack some heads. Hey, Bishop, you know how I like having you do the Orky? Why don't you give us some Orky? <laughs> uh, oh, mental blank. I've already forgotten what it is I'm supposed to be saying. <laughs> Welcome to playing an Orc. <laughs> there are two. Actually, two you know what? Let's do that. Let's do that in character. There's a two second beat, and then the Orc says, Can you say that again with shorter words? You're bigger than him. He's demanding things from me. I'm giving you a chapo worth your tallness. <laughs> Makes <laughs> sense. And reaches out to grab the chopper. All right. I'm going to say then that the difficulty becomes a four. Okay. I might be able to pass this then with my horrible, horrible. Can I assist? Yeah. Can I take if the assist, you please? will play how you assist, sure. Listen, you smelly gits. He's giving you the biggest, baddest chopper there is. It done killed loads of orcs and this, boobies and this, Eldars. This chopper, and I'll, I'll point to all the Dark Eldar here, slew a fell arc. Great, great knife ears. <clears throat> Fancy, punchy knife ears. A fell arc is oh, a... I think it's like a fella, but with Eldar. A fell arc is a mighty... Boss quality knife ears. If he's a boss, where is where's a steel jaw? He's dead. This chopper cut off his head. Uh, Arguing with orcs. This is the right. thing. I think I'm gonna give you guys these guys as NPCs because I'm loving this. Um, okay. I I am so going to I'll finally. Yeah, I'm gonna... Which gives you extra dice if I get sixes, but okay. if not... Uh... So that's one extra die. Yeah. So that's a total of my two, plus the one he gave me, plus your six. Uh, I'm gonna roll this outside of the game's UI, just because it's so many extra dice at this point. Uh, so that is two successes, with oh. the last one being a success, so that one being the, uh, the wrath die. Hmm. And then I will. Can I spend a glory to? Oh wait, 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 wait. Oh wait, we can uh, just use the card. Yeah. Yeah, Battle Brothers. Two extra icons. There we go. Talk yeah. Talk to so... us about teamwork. You see, it's really important that we all get together as a mob <laughs> and do things as <laughs> the biggest, baddest orcs as we is. You is. You is. You is. <laughs> This but Weez is light orcs because Weez Wells tough. Uh, there you go. Like, Gla Glaive is just standing over with the witch, looking on and sort of horrified fascination. And the witch just kind of looks at you and says, Does this shit happen a lot with you people? <laughs> you people? Address us in the problem matter now. I mean, the first time I went on a mission with these people, they all, that one almost blew himself up. <laughs> he says, pointing at Asenrian. Hey, I blew everyone else up. Yeah, no, and that, that's not what I wanted to say. He, he almost also blew me up. If we're not, and and also you as well, Glaive. Well, right. so so with hey, look, I got blown up because I was an immediate threat. Okay, so with Battle Brothers. You pass. So we pass. Congrats! You now have ghost plate and a venom blade. Awesome. I will present the ghost plate to Avon because he did help me out. <gasps> you, you really mean it? <laughs> and I'll hang on to the venom blade for myself because right. I did just I did just lose a blade, so I'll pick up. The you blade. did. Uh, so Seneca, uh, I am going to give you the free talent. Of devotees. Okay. Uh. <laughs> um. So I have I have orc 
commando followers. <laughs> yep, you gain a mob of troops as devoted followers, which means basically you have um, you've got these four orcs that will do whatever you want to do. Use an orc boss now! <laughs> I'm going to look over them and see what clan they're from. Oh god, you're putting me on the spot. I have to come up with an orc clan. If, they're, if they're commandos, they're probably blood axes. Yeah. Let's go with blood so, axes then. I'm going to take some of the blood and... Oh my god, this is awful. <laughs> I will paint the axe symbol on one of my pauldrons. <laughs> And I will now lead them, lead my entourage out as we go. I was going to say, he's like, you call him Big Boss Smarty Elf. Get it? <laughs> is... I will be known as Grenade Puncher. <laughs> what? Right, I just see him do that. <laughs> yeah. So it's Commandos 325, 11, and 6. Yep. And number 25 is the boss. The biggest one, anyway, yes. He's, he's the knob, then. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. the, the witch probably notices Glaive sort of slightly hunched over as he stifles laughter. The witch is just stymied by all this. Like, she doesn't know how to react. Like, this, this is outside of her real house. <laughs> I'm gonna point with my blade because that's the proper way of doing things. I'm going to turn my arm off because I need it right now, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and I'm going to lead the boys out of the arena towards the witch. Come on, you kids! All right. Can I see the witch? I uh, threw my uh, pouch of uh, crystals. Well, it just so happens that uh, generic witch who has come down to the arena floor. <laughs> I look at her. So, you got my earnings? Yeah, also mine, actually. She says, yes, uh, the Siren was the only other person who bet in your favor, so you've made out rather handsomely. Uh, she has instructed me that you are to be given a choice from our wares, mechanically, anything up to a very rare item. Ooh. But again, it's only nice. those of the two of you that bet will actually get that item. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm. Well, I'd, like other... I'd like a venom blade, please. And she says, "I, uh, I believe the, well, ex dracon has several in his quarters. You are free to take one." Well, oh, okay. that's already ours, though. Well, so Senek has got a venom oh, blade. No, no, I mean, she said that she's bringing us oh, to right. the quarters because everything he owned is a uh, is ours because we killed him. So that's okay. that shouldn't be that shouldn't be your your prize. That logic is flawless. Mm -hmm. Okay. In that case, look. Let's walk and talk. Yes, agreed. I concur. All right. Very rare, you say, GM. Yes, and <laughs> I'm actually going to uh, pull up the old uh, rogue trader stuff because, again, my oh. own room only has so much. So we're going to rely on Rogue Trader here to provide us items that we could use. Oh, nice. That's amazing. Um, Let's see. Armory. But yes, I'd like a... If it's if it's all right with you, I'd, I'd like a clone field. Thank you. A clone field's probably a bit much because those were oh. those were super, uh, super things. All right, let me ask you this. Are you interested in ranged, melee, or armor? Uh, melee. Okay. Uh, at the very rare quality, you could get a Hydra Gauntlet. Oh, the, shit, what's that do? Well, the Hydra Gauntlet uh, is actually something very interesting. Um, long story short, uh, they kind of are basically claws that you wear. Um, they're technically only used in pairs by hydra witches um so having one's kind of a big deal uh basically if you all out attacks still a thing in wrath and glory right yes then anytime you do the all out attack 
you can spend your reaction to make an additional attack with each gauntlet. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Cool. I mean, there isn't reactions, but maybe... Well, whatever the equivalent of a reaction a would be... The defense. Yeah, like, I think it would basically forfeit your ability to full defense kind of a thing. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, no so that's one option. That's that's one option. Uh, option see. two is a mind phase gauntlet. And okay. it's not as awesome damage-wise, but uh, if you hit somebody with this, they have to pass both a strength and a willpower at DN3. And if they fail either, they are stunned for one round and take a level of shock for every uh, for every failure. So if they fail both, they would take two shock. Oh my gosh, okay. That's um, a lot to think about already. <laughs> so those are two options from the Soul Reaver that we could bring over. Um, okay, no worries. I'll, I'll think about it. I don't want to take up too much time. I like. just want another arena to go stow the commandos in while we're not using them. Oh, no, no. I don't think you quite understand. They are devoted to you. They are going to oh. chill in your quarters. <laughs> That's fine because I have yeah, a nice, large guard. sand pit and garden in my quarters. So, uh, <laughs> and from mine, that sand pit's going to get pretty orky. <laughs> uh, oh, my. Okay. We're all uh, My zen garden. <laughs> Oh, uh, I guess I should include things that are not uh, very rare. Like, rare and below is fine, too. Mm. Uh, you could get an Agonizer Lash. You could get an Agonizer Talon. You mm. could get an Electro Corrosive Whip. Uh, you could get an Impaler. You could get a Razor Flail. Did he owe anyone any favors? Could I get a Chameleon Cloak, actually? A Chameleon Cloak? Uh... In the base, base yeah, I was book. gonna say that's a base thing. Um, it's it has the keyword any, so and like, uh, I think rangers have an equivalent. Uh, what page is but, it on? Just so I can look at it real fast. Um, so three hundred five is where I'm looking at it. Three hundred five, but it's actually on page three hundred seven. Of course. Uh, let's see. Uh huh. Uh huh. Stealth tests and plus one to defense when in shadow and cover. Sure, if you want it, take it. Amazing. Okay, thank you. Now, to answer the question about whether or not the Dracon owed any favors, uh, when you arrive at his quarters, um, of course you see that he does indeed have one other Venom Blade, um, but for the most part his quarters are basically twice the size of yours, and what strikes you immediately is that there are, without going into too much detail here, there are many scantily clad women sort of waiting for him. Well, I guess now you. So what you do with that is your business. But the other thing you would notice is in checking over his stuff is that uh, Garazon actually owed a favor to someone else in the Lords of the Iron. So what that means is... Oh God. Obviously, he can't really provide that favor anymore, but long story short, there's probably something you're going to have to work out with another Lord of the Iron Thorn. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. Well, I think I think we found another uh, another uh, mission for our party. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be looking at something really should then, I guess. Unless unless you have an idea of something that is better than a Witchblade and a Rune Armor. No, nothing really. <laughs> there's, there's sort of like nothing in the base book, anyway. Right. That would be better than that. A singing Spear, but I don't. I think that's very rare. I think that's... Yeah, uh, like, and you have to remember unique. where you are. Like, this is a dark Eldar ship. They're probably yeah. not going to have Singing Spears. Yeah, yeah, and I, 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 I think seeing spears is a unique rarity, so... Yeah, I don't want yeah. one anyway, so... So yeah, I guess Incinerian is going to be looking for a ranged weapon. Okay. 
Uh, let me pull up a ranged weapon for you. I mean, unless you have something that is not a weapon or armor that is interesting. Well, I do have that as well. Let's see. Nope, can't give you a shadow field. Can't give you a clone field. If you have something for, you know, psychers, that's nice. Well, again, they're Dark Eldar, so they don't really do psychers. Uh, but range weapon. Let's take a look at range weapon because they have some very nice toys. Because my my shooting skills are garbage. Well, uh, if you were to take a splinter cannon, you wouldn't really need to <laughs> hit things. You would just sort of aim in their general vicinity. Uh, there's also a blast pistol. There's a blaster. There's a dark lance. Oh. A disintegrator cannon. Oh, that's interesting. Good. A heat Little lance. Good. A phantasm grenade launcher. Or I'll a get shutter. That. No, you get the phantasm grenade launcher. That has what does it do? It's so, like illusion shit. Uh, the way it works is that these are back-mounted weapons that project volleys of tiny explosive discs that sort of turn things into mist. Uh, anyone within a certain area, so a blast of the grenade's point of impact, must pass a, uh, I would make it either a difficulty 3 or a difficulty 4 toughness. And if they failed, uh, they would be basically, because I don't think the shock table is even a thing in Wrath and Glory, so I'd have to figure out an equivalent. But more or less, they would have to... Let's put it this way. Maybe they would take a combat complication or something. Cool. Like, automatically. Yeah, that's really cool. Oh, dude, get that. Oh. I think it's something you might actually use as well. Shoulder mounted. Sure. Alright. And again, I'll sit down and... I actually probably should make notes of this so that I remember. Um, I have to sit down and uh, actually type out these... Uh, with profiles. Yeah, all these all these things. So I have Phantasm Grenade Launcher for sure. Uh, what was the other weapon that I gave that you guys chose from? Oh no, you chose the cloak, that's right. Um Okay, so I get a note for that. And just Ghost Armor was the other thing that oh, I Ghost Plate. That thing gave me. No, that isn't lovely Senny gave me. Isn't isn't Ghost, Ghost Plate, sorry. Yeah. Ghost Plate should be in the supplement already. Oh, sorry. My mistake. Yep, it is. It's uh, armor rating 4, and it has the force shield trait. Oh, this has made me so happy. <laughs> and... I can grenade punch all day every day now. Oh yeah. This, and this not is... to worry, it's not like I'm giving you this gear for free. It's just I'm yeah. getting a gauge of what sort of threats to throw at you, so that when I do go all out, it feels a little yeah. bit more fair. Okay. Hey, to be, hey, it wasn't free. We betted our money on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is true. We, we also negotiated with the unnegotiable. Yeah. The Orkies. Yeah. I, I want a Camellia line cloak, you know. If you want one too, you can definitely get one. I want to be invisible again. Oh, hold it's on. Nice all right, well, uh, as short of a session as that is, because honestly, I thought the Dracon was going to live a little bit longer. I didn't hear a thing. Didn't hear a thing. Thank you, Jet Noise. Uh, we got a short of a... Hold on. Yeah, I got as far as as short of a session as that is. <laughs> okay, now that I can talk again. Thank you, Jets. Uh, but yeah, as sort of a session as it is, that's all I have planned, because I honestly thought the Dracon would have been a tougher fight, but I forgot to include psychic bullshittery. Um, well, we can talk through this, Siren. She's... I mean, yeah. Yeah, sure. Maybe so if you want to have a conversation with the Siren, I'm more than amicable to that. So, uh, oh, and, and before before we get there, since we're in uh, the Dracon's quarters, I'm going to be looking for the ownership paperwork if that's a thing for the for the ship uh you would find well let's make a let's actually make this a test uh roll me a awareness difficulty four also uh, probably would have been uh, a that fight had we had to fight the orcs yeah like there were a lot of that orcs that could have come in 
<laughs> Definitely up to 25 of them or more. Yeah, I got a shit awareness. I'm going to use a, a RAF, mm -hmm. which doesn't help. Doesn't help. <laughs> no. So, unfortunately, you don't find anything that would say, hey, this ship is whoever bears this piece of parchment kind of a thing. Um, but one of the quote-unquote tavern wenches um, does offer you the helpful tidbit that uh, if you were to present the head of a certain dracon to uh, Lord of the Iron Throne, they either would kill you or transfer the deed to you. Uh, Shit, I put it back to the head. <laughs> uh, mm. So maybe that's a good point for the siren to walk in. Uh, the siren just kind of lets herself into, well, now your quarters. Uh, she does not have the head. Uh, but she kind of looks around and says, hmm, bit, bit drab in here. I don't like his color choices. Oh, but yes, congratulations. Your mastery of the psychic is truly to be feared. She, is she mocking us? <laughs> yeah, obviously. I, I mean, she's a dark elder. The mocking <laughs> you is basically their default state. Yeah, right? Uh, what do you expect? Are. As craft worlders, we kind of deserve it from them. Or not deserve well, it, but should expect it of them. Well, the last one that, you know, was acting all, all uh, high and mighty got burned to a crisp. And then beheaded. That and seems to be... Punched. I'm pretty sure that happened with the previous one, too. So that seems to be a trend. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not that big a deal, because as craft worlders, we get to, we get to go to the Dark Outer and say, we bloody told you so about the yeah. fall for eternity, so. You would think that eventually they'd start having the homunculi breed them to be less, uh, less flammable. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They never met me before. Unfortunately, the homunculi that I'm familiar with don't really do flame retardant skin. It's something we've had problems with before. In any event, I see that you've found your winnings as they are. Is there anything you would like from me at this point? Again, I wear the pants here, but I think some certain level of respect is due. Well, with the head that I just cut off, this ship's officially ours now. Hmm. I, the, 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 what he's trying to say is, the Pirate King is, is trying to say is that he appreciates your respect and notes that your loyalty will be, uh, will be greatly valued. <laughs> she <laughs> actually like, reaches out like a finger and just puts it on your lips and says, shh, the grown-ups are talking. Uh, you were saying... I was saying, nothing changes except one less dickhead. Mm. And there's nobody to say that uh, they own the ship, even if they don't. Well, I'll tell you this. Either way, claiming the ship, as rightfully as it is yours... It's going to involve coming back to the Dark City, and I know how much you craft worlders don't like that. Hey, I'm not bothered. Sounds fun. Shh, the adults are talking. I'm an adult. 10,000 years old. Maybe not that old. Well, it might be best for us to curry favor with the ship's uh, benefactors before we demand from them. Oh, Wouldn't yeah. Too far out of the way with us. It's if not even meant. Out of favor from them. Maybe if we got in favor with them before we switched over, there might be a little less bureaucracy along the way. I'm not a fan of bureaucracy. No, neither am I. It's horrendous. However... I mean, bureaucracy is what's tethering the Monkey down at the end of the day. It ties everyone down. You can't escape bureaucracy no matter who or what you are in this galaxy. Look Even at the, the greenskins. They're everywhere and they don't know what bureaucracy means, do you, boys? What? What's exactly. he saying? Oh, boss. <laughs> Procracy. <clears throat> well, I tell you what. If you make Avon dance like a, a clown right here and now, we'll discuss this over dinner. 
I prod my sword and point in that Evan. Dance. Uh, no, that's alright. This might be one for compel. Out of character. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, no. Well, fortunately, Glaive isn't there. This uh, is true. Right. But besides, I, I think he respects Evan enough to not do that. Thank you, Glaive. <laughs> Thanks, bitch. Somebody does. <laughs> That's a first. I'm a prince, damn it! <laughs> so you keep saying. I haven't no, said that recently. I mean, we're, we're, of course, we're all going to look so dumb when we go back to uh, his local pad and everyone's like, oh man, it's Avon, he's so cool, who are these jokers? <laughs> or alternatively, we go back to his pad and it's, oh, it's Avon. Oh, and right. to be fair, yeah. the prince called me a king, so I'm still at, at the highest standing. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's right. Currently, well, it's, it's, you it's can no say reason. you're a prince and you can say you're a king, but I can say I'm a boss. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Uh, mm, I would actually uh, like to maybe go and find some time to get my spirit stone back and bond with it, my sp special one. I've been feeling kind of bad about neglecting that. I'll hand it to him. <laughs> All right. Thanks, buddy. So, uh, as part of your uh, attunement process, I can reveal the last soul stone to you guys. Let's see. All players' journal should be editable by Avon. So, the spirit inside identifies as Talvar. And they were lost on the path of the dreamer when they were killed by a jealous ex-lover. Oh. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, man. That's rough. Do you want to talk about it? I dream about it constantly. There is nothing else to do in this stone. Oh man, I'm sorry. Sorry to hear about that. Well, hopefully we can be real, real nice friends, and I can help you, help you with this, help you get over this stuff. Would you like to Life's know about my jealous ex-lover? Sorry. Would you like to know about my jealous ex-lover? Because yeah, absolutely. Please lay, lay it down on me, man. I'm here to talk anytime. Well, it started. And he goes into a three and a half hour monologue of just shit you didn't need to know. And at the yeah. end of it, he says... You, you, you just asked him, so what's your character's backstory? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, at the end of it, he finally concludes and says, and that is why you should never take a pie from a Harlequin. <laughs> you cut out and that makes it better. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, well, no, I'll, I'll definitely try to keep that in mind. But look, man, it's been really nice talking to you. Um, stick with me and you'll be just fine. I can't promise that I won't die and we will both be eaten by Slanesh, but look, if you're, if you're in for a, a fun, crazy time, I'm the prince to be with. If you say so. Oh, my, my spirit sounds kind of a bummer. <laughs> <Well>. <laughs> Hey man, oh, wow. Path of the Dreamers, it can be relevant sometimes. No, I know. It's just, he's he's physically bumming me out. I take shock, I receive exhaustion. <laughs> <laughs> While we're waiting to find out about uh, dealing with this favor that the late dragon owed, I'm going to return to my chambers. And I'm going to let the Greenskins know what... Three quarters of my chambers belong to them now. Sure, so let's go to your room real quick. Uh, where am I throwing these orcs? Uh, hold on a second. Uh, uh, and uh, just uh, as a note, as the apparently pirate king, I'll claim the uh, dragon's chambers. I thought so. So, regretfully... And the hose. I hey, hey, they're, the... they're women. You were treating respect on me. I am going to give them, once again, regretfully, because I, I really like guard, but that's evidently gotta, gotta go. I'm going to give them the sand pit and the <laughs> nice nature path with the, with the spring. The Zen garden. Yeah. Oh. oh no. Um, There's an old garden now, boys. <laughs> Quickly. I will... Tell them that this is my boss thrown here. Okay. 
and that any disputes can be settled amongst themselves, and that 25 has the authority to crack any heads that he needs to. Uh, you <laughs> notice that the number 25 has changed to number 26. You can't really identify why or who did it, but it does now say 26. Okay. Oh. Does he still have the chopper? He does. Okay. Okay. Um, I am not going to take the time to investigate further why he has changed his numbers. <laughs> <laughs> that can be for another time, but yes, that this can be the uh, growing space for a burgeoning young law, I suppose. Oh. So uh, you you realize the next time you come back into your room, that chair is going to be decorated with skulls. I know. I know. (laughs) You'll have no idea where the skulls came from. I may end up having to paint a jaw. Where do these Tyranid bits come from? We haven't even fought Tyranids. They're not even in this (laughs) sector. You've been on a void ship this whole time. Where did you even find these? Yeah. Oh, Oryx, we love you so. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyone else have any points of order they'd like to take care of? Yeah, I would like I to find the Beastmaster at oh, some okay. point. Oh, you wanted to find a Beastmaster, yes? Yeah, if there was one on the ship at some point, but I don't have, that's not super crucial. Uh, actually, the Hecatrix that you were introduced to, uh, Alze, uh, would function as a pseudo-Beastmaster. That is the name of my new album, by the way. Pseudo Beastmaster. Pseudo Beastmaster. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, cool. Well, I'm I can hold off if someone else wants to do something else. I'd also like to get a game, game of dice cards in. <laughs> I'm down for dice cards when I return to the party. Alrighty. So, uh, I tell you what, with that little extra padding, we have reached our two hour quota. Yay! So uh, let's go ahead and call the session there. And before I cut the stream, we'll, of course, deal with uh, BP and all that. So I'm going to award you guys three BP for this. The reason it's reduced is because you received material rewards, um, which I think balances out. Yep. And as always, I'm curious what sort of enemy or what sort of challenge would you like to... Uh, face next, or uh, which plot thread would you like to focus on? Because there's several out there at the moment. It's interesting. It's a hard one. Well, who technically didn't fight the orcs? <laughs> this is I true. do support the idea of settling that favor, personally. Of selling... Settling that favor? Yeah. yeah that, I wanna, that'll that'll be a problem. I, I want to officially like, claim the shit. Also, don't get too cocky because they might challenge you to single combat is the thing mm-hmm. and as good as you are I'll take it. Can, there is like ways to stop psychers oh I, you haven't really seen this Indian fight melee though Don't, no uh, yeah he's a psycho sure he can handle it himself without yeah. his powers yeah the operative thing is he is also a psycho yeah that's, that's the thing yeah so. oh and uh is that a way, like, do they have um, some kind of black, the equivalent of a weapon, weapon master, blacksmith type of guy? On... Um, they would. Um, so if you want to, like, custom make a weapon... Uh... I just want to uh, make a quick, uh, like, an easy upgrade to my Witchblade. I just want to add a dueling grip on it, and that's it. Oh, yeah, sure. You can do that. Thank you. All righty. All right, so with that all out of the way, uh, fun session, guys. I'm going to kill the stream. So anyone watching on Twitch, YouTube, etc., etc., thank you so much, and see you later.